Hello, everyone. Welcome to another CL Talks. I am ex- so excited about these messages concerning peace. You know, we talked about peace in a world full of fear. And I want to talk to you about peace in a world full of confusion or peace in the world of confusion. Now, let me just say this up front. I am going to take my time on this because in the day and the time that we're living in, I just believe with all my heart that this is one of the most important messages that I can give you at this time in our society, in our culture, in our lives, uh, especially we that are in the church, uh, we that are the light. Okay, so I want you to listen very carefully to every single word that I am going to teach you. Because as we progress through this, it's going to cause you to mature, It's going to be meat. Now, I can tell you that right now. It's not just going to be milk with no substance. It is going to be the meat of God's Word. And right now, the church of Jesus Christ, we need to be gnawing on some bones because we've eaten the meat of God's Word. That's the way you mature. We can't stay as babies. We have to mature in the Word of God. We have to renew our minds so that in these last days, we can be productive. We can accomplish the things that God wants us to accomplish. So I want to go to the book of James in the third chapter. And I want to read to you from verses 13 through 18 as James is describing the difference between false wisdom and true wisdom, demonic wisdom and heavenly wisdom. Today there is a lot of deception. Remember Jesus said in Matthew 24, He said, Before I return, there's going to be just a large amount of deception. And so we need to make sure that we are not deceived. Okay, so let's read this in James the third chapter, verse 13 through 18. And he says this, Who is wise and understanding among you? All right, who is wise and understanding among you? You might as well go ahead and look at somebody next to you and just say, All right, he's talking about me right now. He's talking about me. So we're going to dissect this, and we're going to see who literally is wise and understanding. So he says, Let him show by good conduct that his works are done in meekness of wisdom. But if you have bitter envy and self-seeking in your hearts, do not boast and lie against the truth. In other words, what he's saying is if you have envy, jealousy, self-ambition, there's greed, and you're self-seeking, what are you going to do? You're going to boast, and you're going to boast against the truth, which means this, you're going to boast against Jesus. You're going to boast about yourself. That's pride, okay? So he said, that's not very wise uh, to do that. So let's go ahead and finish. So he said, this wisdom, this wisdom, does not descend from above, but is earthly, sensual, demonic. Okay? So he says, where, for where envy and self-seeking exist, wherever that's at, look, look at this, so vitally important, confusion and every evil thing are there. They exist there. They live there. They multiply there. They produce there. Okay? But the wisdom that is from above, that's heavenly wisdom, that's godly wisdom, is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality, without hypocrisy. Now the fruit of righteousness is shown in peace by those who make peace. So vitally important for us to understand that. So, when we look at the book of James, we literally are looking at a book that is probably one of the most practical books of teaching us how to live as a Christian. Practical. You know, a lot of people teach things, but tell me how to apply it. A lot of people give knowledge, but I want to know how to apply that knowledge. And that's exactly what James does It is a book of the practical application of Christianity. So, let's start from the very thing that we said in verse 13. And what is that? He starts out by asking a question. 
who is wise and has understanding. See, I've just said this a while ago, but there, there is a abundance of knowledge in this world, especially now with the internet. Man, you can pull up anything at any time. Uh, you can just say, hey Siri, look this up for me, or, or okay Google, look this up for me. It, it is just amazing, and we can find information after information. you got w- Wikipedia out there that when you pull that up, you can get all the information about just about anything or anybody that you want to have information about. So the knowledge that is in the world right now is, wow, it, it is just off the chart. Uh, and so, so when we talk about knowledge and also knowledge in the church, all right, there, you can go up on social media anytime, anywhere. You go, go up on YouTube, Facebook, you can pull up just sermon after sermon after sermon after sermon. And just remember this, because in a local church, God assigns you to a local church. He assigns you to a place where that local church can work together with other local churches, uh, reaching out to their community uh, to win people over uh, to the Lord Jesus Christ and do kingdom works, do what God's called us in the kingdom. So there's a bunch of... There, there's an abundance of knowledge in the in the world. There's an abundance of knowledge uh, in the church. But the question is, is there an abundance of wisdom and understanding? Wisdom and understanding. Why? Because wisdom, remember now, wisdom is the practical application of the knowledge that I receive. If you receive knowledge, but you don't have wisdom and understanding with it, then that knowledge just becomes something that you like. You take a book off, you look at it, and then you put it back on the bookshelf. You really, it really doesn't do you any good. If you do not have wisdom with knowledge, you're not going to know how to apply the knowledge that you have received, and you have to apply it through wisdom and with understanding. So, here's the question. What is wisdom? And how does it differ from knowledge? Very important. How does it differ? How do we differentiate? How do, it dif- how do we know, okay, I got knowledge, but now how do I apply the knowledge? That is wisdom. Now, wisdom, number one, is this. Wisdom is discerning between true knowledge and false knowledge. There is so, so much false narratives and false statements and lies that, that are being perpetrated today, it is just, it, it's incredible. And it's just amazing that so many of God's people is listening to all of this negativity. They're listening to all of these lies that people are throwing out and, and coming against one another and hating one another and attacking one another and in strife with one another. It's, it's just crazy. If you get caught up in that, Man, you, there's going to be so much confusion in your life. Uh, you need to make sure that in these last days, because it's going to increase, but in these last days, you've got to make sure that you're able to discern between that which is right and that which is wrong, that which is false and that which is true. Even the Bible tells us that we are to test the spirits. It, it, that means to discern. And I'm seeing a lot of Christians today that are just so gullible, they're taking everything that comes as fact and true. And we're seeing things being exposed that was lies, and and so many people believe them. So in this day and time that we live, that there's so much confusion, you've got to know what is true and what is false. So listen to Proverbs, the first chapter, verse 7. It says this, The fear of the Lord... And, 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 and the word fear there basically is the reverential honor and respect of God and His Word. Very important. It's not a tormenting fear that God's going to get me. He's going to pound me. He's going to take me out. That is not the New Covenant. That is not the New Testament. Okay? So, did you ever see Jesus doing that? No. Jesus came to heal people. He came, he came to correct their thinking. He came uh, to present God in the flesh to everybody, you want to, you really want to see God. People say, I want to see God. If you want to see God, just get in the Bible and look at Jesus because He's God in the flesh. Okay? So it says, the fear of the Lord, the reverential respect and honor of God and His Word is the beginning of knowledge. That's the beginning of knowledge. 
that I know that what God is going to tell me is right. The beginning of knowledge that I respect God means that I respect His Word. It means I get into His Word because His Word is now my manual for me. The owner's manual that He gives me, it is my manual telling me everything about my life. How does He want me to live? Uh, everything about Himself. You know, it's just it's amazing. The Word of God is just so full uh, of the uh, uh, about God and the things of God and the promises of God. So the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Now it's just the beginning. We have a process of now that once we know God through Jesus Christ, we want to renew our minds through the Word of God. So the knowledge begins to grow. It increases in us and it's so important because why? Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Faith comes by hearing and understanding the knowledge of God's Word. Faith grows and you need faith. So he says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools, fool. Now, who is he talking about? Who is that fool? The Bible says only a fool says that there is no God. That's the reason that they have their own a holiday. It's April 1st. It's called April Fool's Day. Okay, But the Bible says only a fool says that there is no God. So here he's talking about fools that don't believe in God, fools that reject God. So he says the fools despise wisdom and instruction. Okay, How many times have you seen people get so upset and get so offended when somebody tries to correct them? One of the, one of the greatest uh, growth patterns in my life has been when somebody loved me enough to sit down with me and speak the truth in love, then, and it's the truth that corrected me. So, again, fools despise wisdom. That is not who you are. Fools despise wisdom and uh, in instruction. So, fools basically hate and try to suppress the truth of God's Word. Listen to Proverbs, the first chapter, verse 29 through 33. Again, talking about those that do not believe God or won't accept what God says. And, and listen to me very carefully. I have met Christians before that they have received Jesus as Lord of their life, but they live by the flesh, not being led by the Spirit, and they want to go to heaven, but they don't want God to tell them what to do. They want to live their own life the way they want to live their own life. They, they want to have what they want to have, but they do not want to obey God or be corrected by God. So what is that? That's foolish. That, that, that's, that's, that's being foolish in the way you approach who God is. Because a lot of people say, I don't want to go to hell. I want to go to heaven. But I don't want God interfering in my life. I still want to do what I want to do and have what I want to have and act the way I want to have, act and speak the way I want to speak. Friend, listen to me very carefully. The moment, if you really did make Jesus Christ, notice this, notice this statement, not Savior, because there's no place in the Bible in the New Testament that says call upon Jesus as Savior. No. The Bible says if you confess Jesus as Lord, call upon the name of the Lord. In other words, you have surrendered your independency, and you now have come into the body of Christ, you have surrendered your life, everything, all of your faculties, all of you, you have surrendered to Jesus 100%. He is now Lord of your life, and now it is up to me and the responsibility to obey Him in everything that I do. And how am I going to do that? I need knowledge, I need wisdom, and I need understanding. So, listen, we make mistakes. We do things that get us out uh, into a place uh, that's suffering consequences this time. Why? Because we want to do what we want to do instead of obeying uh, Jesus as Lord of our life. Our whole life, progressively, is being conformed into the image of Christ. Our whole life is me obeying Jesus, obeying the Word of God. That's actually, the Bible says in 1 John, that's actually the proof of my love for God. 
that I would obey him. Again, we're going to make mistakes. We're going to do things. But when you do make a mistake, are you convicted? Are you convicted by the Holy Spirit? And, and do I turn and repent and get back under the lordship of Jesus? Okay. Remember, that's what Adam and Eve, Eve did. They came out from underneath the lordship of Almighty God because they wanted to have it their own way. Okay, you don't want to do that because the consequences which we don't even understand him and we don't project that we're going to have consequences, consequences are really, really bad. It doesn't mean that the mercy of God uh, ever stops. The mercy of God is always there. But sometimes my actions are going to cause me grief and then a lot of times I have to go back and I end up having to pay for my actions even though God forgives me but the consequences are still there, and I have to walk that out. Now, God will help me walking that out, but why do I want to go through all of that if I just obey Jesus, if I just obey the Word of God? So listen to verse 29 again. It says, Because they hated knowledge and did not choose to fear the Lord, they would have none of my counsel and despise my every rebuke. Wow. That is just amazing. He says, Therefore... Watch this. When we despise the counsel of God, we despise the Word of God, we make a decision that we're not going to obey the Word of God, what's going to happen? Again, there's consequences. Look at this. Therefore, they shall eat the fruit of their own way. Man, I'm telling you, that can be some bitter, bad, rotten fruit. So he said, and be filled to the full with their own fancies, which I will end up paying a great price for. For the turning away of the simple will slay them, and the complacency of fools will destroy them. But whoever listens to me, speaking of wisdom, whoever listens to me will dwell safely and will be secure without fear of evil. Without fear of evil. That is amazing. I want to go back to verse 30 for just a moment. Very important that we see this. He says this, They would have none of my counsel and despise my every rebuke. Now, every single time that you pull in to live streaming and you're listening to me teach you the Word of God, every single time you have a decision to make. Do I want to receive this counsel? Is it just going to be knowledge? Or is it going to be knowledge that I will apply what I'm being taught and what I'm hearing? That's very important. So what you're receiving right now, because I'm giving you the Word of God, that is the counsel of God's Word. The counsel of God's Word is wisdom. And the Holy Spirit, the Bible says, the Holy Spirit is our counselor. And here, watch this, and despise my every rebuke. Now, here's the question we need to ask. How Does God, through the Holy Spirit, rebuke us? Some people think that God physically hurts us. He does things to us. He takes things away from us. You know, that is not the way God corrects, chastises, or rebukes His people. That is not how the Holy Spirit does it. I want to show you in the Bible exactly the instrument God uses when He rebukes us or He chastises us or, you know, he, he's, trying, he's trying to get our attention or He corrects us. It's important that you understand that because this, this, this image, this thinking that comes out of some of these judgmental, critical churches it is one that just says, boy, God's going to beat you up. God's going to come under from you. are going to walk over the bridge. He's going to come out from under the bridge. He's going to jerk you down, feed you to the alligators. He's going to have cars or trucks come through, uh, uh, come through uh, stoplights and hit you when you're on a green light. Or God's going to put all this sickness and disease on you because He's teaching you something. That is not in the Bible. Let me ask you this. Did you see Jesus do that? Did you see Jesus when a leper came up to him and say, No, I'm not going to heal you right now because God's teaching you something. You need to learn a lesson here. No, absolutely not. 
Okay, are you ready for this? So how does God correct us as His children? 2 Timothy, the third chapter, verse 16 through 17. I'm going to read this out of the Amplified Bible. Now watch this. I'm going to take my time with this. All Scripture is God-breathed. That means this is what we're talking about. All Scripture is God-breathed. It is the Word of God. Okay? Given by divine inspiration. That means those who have written this Bible were inspired, moved upon by the Holy Spirit of God, telling them exactly what to write uh, in the Word of God. That's the reason we have the Word of God. So as God breathed, given by divine inspiration, and it is what? It is profitable. So in other words, if I don't abide by this counsel, if I don't listen to what God is saying and obey it, do it, order my conduct, order my conversation through that, it's not going to profit me. In other words, what we read a while ago, it's going to end up being bitter fruit. And and we don't want that. So he says, it is profitable. If you want to profit, if you want to have good success, you must listen and obey God's Word. Very important. So it is profitable for instruction. He instructs us. But listen to this. He instructs you, but He will not make you do something. That's the reason we mature in the things of God. That's the reason we can't just stay on milk in the Word of God. We can't just stay babies in the Word of God. We can't stay in elementary school. We've got to learn and we've got to grow up and move on. Okay? So he says, so he says for instruction, for conviction, watch this. This is the Word of God now. Okay? So the Word of God instructs us so that we can tell the difference between True wisdom and false wisdom. We can discern these things. So he says, is profitable for instruction, also for conviction of sin. Not condemnation, but conviction. How does God convict us when we are doing something wrong? When we get the Word of God. You may be sitting in church, you may be listening to, to me right now, and your life is just completely out of the will of God. And now... The Holy Spirit is moving upon you and convicting you of sin. Now, I'm not saying that, that, that y'all are in sin. I'm just saying this is, this is how it works. You can come to church and sit in a message, and all of a sudden I, I've gotten away from the will of God, and that message will speak right to me, speak right to my heart. And what does that do? The Holy Spirit then brings conviction. Now, there's a difference between conviction and condemnation. The devil brings condemnation. But Jesus, the Holy Spirit, will always bring conviction. Why does He convict us of any wrong or any sin in our life? Because He loves us. The Bible says, speak the truth in love. He will speak to our hearts because He loves us. And and the reason He does that is because if He knows that I stay in that sin, it's going to get worse and worse and worse, and the devil is going to do really bad things. And it can eventually bring destruction, even the destruction of my life, my family, everything around me. So God immediately, the Holy Spirit convicts me. Now, if you pull yourself away from church, you pull yourself away from Christian friends, you don't read the Word of God anymore, guess what? After a period of time, your conscience will become seared. And after a period of time, you will grieve the Holy Spirit. And then the Bible says, the next step, that if I don't listen to Him, if I don't repent, don't correct my life, I quench the Holy Spirit. That's a scary place to be. You know why? Because once I quench the Holy Spirit, there's no more conviction. Man. It's not that God gives up on us. He never gives up on us in any way, shape, or form. It's not that. It's my heart. It's my heart that's been hardened. It's my heart that I'm not allowing the Word of God to penetrate my heart anymore. That's a dangerous place to be in. That's the reason I always want to be open to the Word of God. God examined me. Holy Spirit examined me. Man, when the Holy Spirit convicts me with something, I want to be quick to repent quick to repent. I don't want to carry this thing with me. It's just going to produce more bitter fruit in my life. So that's the reason that 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 it that the word of God is profitable for instruction for conviction of sin. Uh, that it when I read this, how many times do I read this myself and man, the Lord is showing me, okay, 
all right, you're, you're not operating like you should in this particular area of your life. And man, I'll just sit right there while I'm reading the Word of God and say, Father, I repent. Holy Spirit, help me to be able to do this. Always bring the Holy Spirit in to help you. Remember, He's the helper to do that. So, let's move on. It's profitable for con- instruction, for conviction of sin. Watch this, Word of God. For correction of error and restoration to obedience. Wow. That's incredible. Okay? So, correction. Only a fool does not receive correction. So, God wants to, through His Word, if we are not, if we're incorrect in our life, our behavior, the things that we're doing, then the, God, through His Word, will correct us. It brings correction. And again, it's up to me whether I receive that correction or not. Now, here's one thing you need to understand. We still live in this flesh. So when somebody corrects us, this flesh will rise up. This flesh will become offended. Who who are you telling me what to do? Who are you trying to correct me? Who are you doing this? The flesh will rise up. And that's where you've got to put the flesh down and allow the spirit on the inside of you that will say, just listen. Just read this and listen to what the Spirit of God is saying. And it can be through uh, other people that you respect. It can be through the teaching and the preaching of God's Word. That's the reason I love the preaching and teaching of God's Word. I still listen to preaching and teaching of God's Word myself, even though I study, I read the Word of God so I can bring you the Word of God. But I listen to it myself. And there's been many times that I'm listening to somebody else that is speaking the Word of God and, and preaching the Word of God or teaching the Word of God that I can get convicted or I get corrected in certain areas of my life. The more I allow the Spirit of God to correct me, wow the more profitable it's going to be, or I'm going to have my life is going to be more profitable. So it says, for obedience, now watch this, for training in righteousness, that means right living, right conduct, training in righteousness. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I am in right standing with God. But then there's righteous living. That's the way God wants us to live, holy and righteous in His sight, learning to live. Watch this, learning. Watch this, look at this right here. Learning, learning. It doesn't happen overnight. It doesn't have, it takes time. Man, I've been walking in this for almost 50 years and I'm still learning. I'm still growing. I'm still maturing in, 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 in things that, that, uh, of God. Okay? So it's learning to live. I'm not learning just to learn. I'm not going to be one of those that go to college and get 18 degrees but never go to work. Never do anything, okay? That, that's a waste of knowledge and a waste of time, really. So it says, learning to live in conformity to God's will, both publicly and privately, which is very important. Because if you are not living what you live publicly when people can see you, if you're not living that way privately behind closed doors, guess what? What is that called? Hypocrisy. That's being a hypocrite. And it's very important because God not only sees me publicly, but He also sees me privately. privately. And then it says, behaving, here we are, behavior, conduct, behaving honorably with, with personal integrity. Because that's what, the, that's what the, the Word of God gives me. The Word of God teaches me integrity, truth. Telling the truth. So personal integrity and moral courage to stand up for morality in an immoral world. The courage to live the way God's called me to live. The way He wants me to do things. The way He wants me to react. The way He wants me to act. The way He wants me to to conduct my conversation. The way that I should speak. Not like the world. I'm not conformed to the world any longer. But I'm being transformed by the renewing of my mind. He said, moral courage to stand up for what is right. Don't be hiding in the shadows. 
Don't try to submerge yourself and, and just blend in with everybody so that you people don't know that you're a Christian or you're not standing up for anything. My gracious, folks, if you don't stand up for anything, there's no fulfillment in something like that. You need to stand up. And the courage comes from the Holy Spirit of the living God to stand for what is truth. And when you stand for truth, speak the truth in love. Stand for truth in love. Amen? So he says, so that the man of God, here, you want to be complete? You want to be proficient in everything that you do? So that the man of God may be complete, uh, proficient, outfitted, and thoroughly equipped for what? For every single good work. So, I took that time to let you know, this is the way that God corrects us. This is what He does. This is how He fulfills uh, the, the, the getting to us the way we should act and, and the conduct. And this is the way, listen to me very carefully, this is the way He corrects us. This is the way He instructs us. It's through His Word. That, that's the reason Jesus was correcting and instructing His disciples. You never saw Jesus walk around and grab up some big uh, uh, branch off of a tree and beat Him over the head. No, He always spoke to them. And then it's the Word of God that is speaking to us today. So, when we were talking about the fools, those that reject knowledge, listen to verse 29 again. I'm going to go back there. It says in Proverbs 1, 29 and 33, Because they hated knowledge and did not choose to fear the Lord, they would have none of my counsel and despise every rebuke. Why did they would, would not have any of God's counsel? Or why did they despise His every rebuke or correction that comes through the Word of God? Because they hated knowledge. And that, that is not knowledge of like learning the multiplication table or learning English or the ABCs. This is the knowledge of God. They hated the knowledge of God and because they did not choose to fear the Lord. Now, let's look at verse 31. This is the result of hating knowledge and not choosing the wisdom of God. Therefore, they shall eat the fruit of their own way and be filled with the full of their own fancies. From the turning away of the simple will slay them. There is a great price to pay when you turn away from God's correction or God's knowledge or God's wisdom. And the complacency, a complacency of fools will what? Wow. It will what? Destroy them. But whoever listens, but whoever listens. Now you need to raise your hand and say, okay, that's my middle name right now, whoever. Whoever, I am a whoever. Whoever listens to me, listens to what? Wisdom, the wisdom of God, which is the Word of God. The wisdom of God, which is the mind of Christ, which is the Holy Spirit living on the inside of, a, living on the inside of us. That's the reason that you want the meat of God's Word. That's the reason you want the balance of God's Word. You just don't want self-motivational messages all the time. You need messages that will deal with every area of your life. And that's what the Word of God does. That's the reason pastors need to preach and teach the balance of God's Word. Not just, you know... Uh, uh, single in on just one aspect or I'm just going to preach the promises. That's all I'm going to preach. I'm just going to preach prosperity. I'm just going to preach the power of God. Instead of preaching about conduct, instead of preaching the full Word of God so that we can be complete and proficient and successful God's way. So, so he goes on to say, he goes on to say, but whoever will listen to me, now listen to this, whoever listens to me, watch this, incredible, will dwell in safety and will be secure, I love this, and without fear of evil. Let me say that one more time. Look at this. Whoever listens to me will dwell safely. Will dwell safely. That means you'll lay down at night knowing that God's going to take care of you. And will be secure without the fear of evil. Now, real quickly, let's go to Galatians, the fifth chapter. Watch this. Galatians, the fifth chapter, verse 7 through 10. The Bible says this. Apostle Paul is speaking. Here's what he says. You are running the race so well. Who has, 
Who has held you back from following the truth? There are people around you that are going to try to stop you from following the truth. There, there are even Christians today. Listen to very carefully what I'm saying. There are people today that are living carnal lifestyles. And in their carnality, living by the flesh, they're going to try to stop you from fully following and living in the truth. Now, why would they do that? Think about this. Why would they do that? Because if you're going to live in the truth, now the Holy Spirit through your life brings conviction in their life. Brings conviction of the sin that they're living in. And, and, and so when you stand for truth, it doesn't mean you condemn them in any way, but you can actually talk to them uh, about the sin that they're living in and try to pull them out of it. The Bible even says that uh, over in 1 Peter, uh, to save those and pull them out of the fire. You, you want to do that? It's, it's so vitally important that you understand concerning that uh, aspect of our lives as Christians. But see, when you start saying, I'm going to live by the truth, you will have Christians that literally can say things about you, can gossip about you, spread rumors about you. It happened with me. The reason being is because you've made a decision to follow the truth. You've made a decision to walk in the wisdom of God. You've made a decision that you're going to obey Jesus. No matter what it costs, no matter it costs you friends or whatever, you're going to obey Jesus. Well, when you're around carnal Christians, they're going to be offended at you. They're going to laugh at you, mock you. Uh, they're, they're, some of them can persecute you. Again, it's happened to me. That's where you just look at them and just say, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to talk like that. I'm not going to go to that. I, I'm not going to look at that. I'm going to follow Jesus. I said that so many times in my young Christian life. I had uh, some folks that were living carnal lives that got so mad at me. They said, oh, you're just being self-righteous. I said, no, I'm not being self-righteous. I'm just doing what the Bible says. You know, I'm just following God. I love Jesus with all my heart. I'm just doing what He says. You know, eventually, some of those people that did that, uh, when their life was falling apart and they were eating some of the fruit of living carnally, guess who they came to, to uh, for, for prayer? Me. They came to me for prayer. And one guy looked at me and he said, you know what, your life is convicting me, and I know you're right, I know I'm wrong, please pray for me. That's, amazing. That's the reason you stand firm for what you believe and don't give up, because people are still checking you out to look. So he says, Paul says, you were running the race so well, who has held you back from following the truth? It certainly isn't God, for He is the one who called you to freedom. This false teaching... There was teaching telling them they could live any way they wanted to live because of the grace of God. And Paul said, no, this is false teaching. This false teaching is like a little yeast that spreads through the whole batch of dough. And then he says in verse 10, I am trusting the Lord to keep you from believing false teachings. Do you see that? As a pastor, that's exactly what I'm doing. But I can't stop you from believing those. You have to make a decision in your own mind whether you want to believe God, you want the wisdom of God, you want to walk in the teachings of God. You're the one that has to make that decision. I can't make that decision for you. You can make a decision go any way that you want to go. But you better make sure that the way you're going is God's way. Because if not, you're going to pay a big price in these last days. You better refill, fill your mind with the Word of God so you can discern between that which is right teaching and wrong teaching. That which is false wisdom and that which is true wisdom. So he said, this false teaching is like a little yeast that spreads through the whole batch of dough. I am trusting the Lord to keep you, uh, to keep you from believing false teachings. God will judge that person. Man... People that are bringing false teachings, they're in big trouble. I don't want to be there. That's the reason I stick to the Word of God. God will judge that person, whoever he is, who, uh, uh, who has been confusing you. And here's that word, confusing, who has been confusing you. When you get false teaching or somebody's giving you false wisdom, it already always brings confusion. And that is not where you want to be. You do not want to walk around in confusion. Why? Because what did we read? Let me just 
in closing this down right now, let me just read this to you. He says this. He says, false wisdom, false teaching. He said, so, so here's, what, here, here's what it does. It says, it has, it has confusion. Here it is in verse 16 of James 3.16. For where envy and self-seeking exist, because false teachers is all about them. It's what they can get for themselves out of you to lead you astray. Okay? So it says, it, 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 it says, so this is self-seeking. Uh, envious, self-seeking exists. Watch this. Confusion and every evil thing are there. Wow. So when you get things that are false, that confuse you, it's the devil setting you up to bring every evil thing in there. That's what's so vitally important that you need to understand. Amen? So, what am I doing? Feed yourself with the Word of God. Listen to good teaching. Listen to teaching that's going to teach you how to apply and live by the Word of God. That's so vitally important. Now, let me just say this. As we move through this, I'm going to take my time. We're going to break this down because where we're living right now, it's vitally important that you get rooted and grounded in faith and solid on the rock. Can you say amen? Let me just say this. The Bible tells us, guess who wisdom is? Wisdom is Jesus. Wow. Wisdom is Jesus. And the, and the Bible tells us that when I receive Jesus as Lord of my life, then I receive the Spirit of God on the side of me who's going to lead me, guide me, and direct me into all truth. That's the key, okay? You need the mind of Christ. How do you get that? You must repent of your sin and ask Jesus Christ to be the Lord of your life. And you say, Pastor, I want to do that. Maybe you're watching me, and tonight you've been convicted in some areas of your life that you know that you're not living right. And you're going to eat the fruit of that if you don't repent. So you need to repent of that also. I want you to pray this with me. Say, Father God, as I come before you right now, I thank you for your love for me. Because everything I've been telling you is because he loves you. I thank you for your love for me. And Father, I believe that Jesus Christ is your son. He came in this flesh, in this earth, in the flesh. He died on the cross. And you raised him from the dead. I believe that with all my heart. I ask you in the name of Jesus that you forgive me of all my sin. I repent of my sin right now. And I thank you for your forgiveness. And right now I confess Jesus Christ as the Lord of my life. Jesus Christ as the Lord. Notice this. As Lord of of my life. That means you're going to submit to Him, you surrendered Him, and now you're going to submit to Him and submit to His Word. And guess what? It's going to be profitable and successful for you to do that. Amen? Praise God. I'm, I'm so excited about this Word. I'm so excited as we get into this about wisdom and true wisdom and false wisdom. But listen, I want to thank each and every one of you for your continual giving. Ladies and gentlemen, for us to continue to do this, uh, not only our friends, our our CL family, uh, all of our membership. Listen, thank you so much for continuing to give. You're planting seed into good ground that we're seeing people's lives change. Even though our methods are different right now, but people are still being changed, saved, delivered, and set free and healed. So folks, listen, giving, planting seed is for your harvest. Planting seed helps us to do what God's called us to do. But then you get the harvest of it. The harvest is tremendous. It is it's phenomenal. Okay? As you plant seed like a farmer, God's going to see to it that your needs are met. So thank you for that. Okay? We love you. God bless you. And uh, listen, take these notes and study them. And we're going to walk through this. And I'm telling you, we're going to mature in the things of God. We will not be deceived. Amen. God bless you. We love you. Have a great week.